Dennis Osborne, the creator of Vision Basic, just five days ago put out this video about random numbers on his channel. And I thought it was an excellent video. And he covered of several different methods of seeding random values and different techniques, all using his software, Vision Basic. And so what I thought I would do in this video, I thought there was just one technique that I commonly use on my Commodore 64 programs that I didn't see him cover on this video. So I wanted to kind of take some of the code that he used and then try using my method. And that method is to use the SID chip to generate a random value. So what I did was I started with the base program that he had written in Vision Basic, which is fairly simple, which is to create a bitmap screen using the entire screen 320 by 200 on the Commodore 64, have a max value for X and a max value for Y, plot the points X comma Y, and then check the keyboard if there's any key pressed. If there's not, just keep looping. And then in this gap right here is a function to generate a random number. And then if you do hit the space bar to clear the bitmap screen and switch you back into text mode. And right now it's not generating a random number. It's just showing that it's going to graphics mode and then it's putting a pixel on the top left portion of the screen. If you hit the space bar or any key, you return back to Vision Basic. So now I'm going to show you the SID method of generating a random number. And to do that, what you have to do is initialize the SID chip using the following commands. Load the value 255, store it in voice frequency 3 low byte and high byte, then load hex 80 and store it in voice 3 control register. And that's just to initialize it. And then in order to grab a random number between 0 and 255, it's just these three lines of code right here. And that's fairly easily implemented in Vision Basic. So let's go ahead and modify the program here really quick. I'll do the initialization program at 1000. And I'll call it random init or init random. Let's put it at 2000. And just following the other program, it's just load 255 store it at D4OE and D, D4OF. Then load hex 80 and store it at D412. That's pretty much it. I don't think you need to put a return on a, on a we could put a return statement, but I don't think we need it. So right after the clear screen, I'm just gonna call maybe line 15, call init rand. Then what we wanna do is we wanna generate the function for random. We're gonna fill it in right here, call it rand. And I'll make that a, pro a procedure at 1000. So we'll say at 1010 load D41B and we don't need the number sign for that. Compare it to the max value that's being passed down which is this 320 or the 200 but the low byte, we're only checking at this point, the low byte. Branch if carry is set, which means greater than or equal, back to loop. Otherwise store it in the low byte of the random number. And that's really it. Let's take it for a run. 
and I have an error. Okay, <laughs> I see my problem. Want to make that FF? I didn't even. It is early, and let's give that a run. And so right now we're not hitting the full screen. I have an error. Ah, okay, I see. In order for this to work, this has to be a max of 255 if we're just using the low byte, 8 bits. So let's run this again. Oops. And you'll see now we're getting a random value for X, a random value for Y, all the way up to 255 on the X. And that's why you have this blank space on the right side. And we'll get to that in a moment. Going from top to bottom is 200 pixels. For that, we only need an 8-bit value. If we go ahead and run the warp mode, and this is what Dennis did on his video, just to kind of warp it, you'll see after a few seconds even, basically the entire screen will turn white. I thought this was all fine and dandy, but what I really wanted to do was have it run and do the entire screen like Dennis's video was doing. So in order for that to happen, this value here has to be 320. But in order for that to happen, we have to modify the program to not just be 8-bit, it has to be 16-bit. I thought about that. How do I make this 16-bit? Well, I could have a a value for the low byte randomly generated and a value for the high byte randomly generated. But if you do a random generation on just the high byte, having it either be randomly zero or one, you can do that, but that doesn't really mimic a true random number. And so that is sort of a problem. And I believe me, I spent a few hours looking at trying to figure that out, the proper way to do that. And what I wanted to do is kind of just show the solution that I came up with and not all of the iterations of failures that I had. So the first thing that I wanted to try was to rewrite this section here from 1000. and have it sort of work for both the high byte and the low byte. So what I wanted to do, load a random value, store it in the low byte, which is RN. Then I needed a few no ops here. I didn't really play around with how many, but I just started with four. and then load another random value. And store it in the high byte. I started with that and then if you run it just the way it is, it's gonna not quite work. So this has to be modified up here. This section because it's not generating a value between these 320 and 200 so what you have to do is sort of rework this so you call the random function and then right after that do a quick check if x is greater than 320 then loop it back And then you do the same thing on this one. If Y is greater than 200, then loop it back. So if X is greater than 320, loop it to 40. If Y is greater than 200, loop it back to 50. And that does slow it down. 
You can see it's very slow and inefficient. If we warp it, oops, cancel. You can see it is filling the screen, but it's very slow. And it, it is semi-random. It's filling the screen fairly uniformly. But in order to improve it greatly, and only for this function instance, there's a neat way to sort of speed this up significantly. And that is because when you think about this, the way this is generating from 1000, this is just generating a random number for the high byte and a random number for the low byte. So in order to speed this up greatly, if you just and the high byte with the number one, you'll mask off all the bits from two to eight, just and you only leave, you'll end up with just a random number between zero and one, which is what we need for this particular instance. So if we just create a line 1030, and just and it with a one. And without making any further changes, and let's see how that impacts the performance. And you see immediately, now it's much, much quicker. And then if we do go ahead and warp it within a couple of minutes the entire screen will randomly be filled and this will turn white. So that was my journey to figure out if I could generate a random number using the SID chip being inspired from Dennis Osborne's Vision Basic video. I'm gonna run it again. So that is the video. I just wanted to see if there was another way of generating a random number and if you have another idea of how to generate a random number that wasn't covered by Dennis Osborne or using the SID chip or, or even a way of improving my algorithm here, drop your idea in the comment and be interested to know. Anyhow, that's my video and thank you for watching. Why not just get rid of these no ops? Let's see what happens if we do that. Maybe it's okay. does seem to work without them. I'll hit run here and start the timer. I think I'll just go to two minutes. Boom. So we still have quite a bit after two minutes. At, let's add the no ops back in. <laughs> And let's do it is this again, this test. And let's wait two minutes here. Okay, so we're hitting the two minute mark right here. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the clock and we got much further. Now I'm gonna take away a couple of no ops and see, we'll run the test again. All right, so we're about to hit the two minute mark here again. And to me, it looks like this one's a little less, screen is a little less filled than the, than the one with the four, the four no ops. So I think, I think the one with four is fairly optimized. All right, so one of the questions I had was, Maybe I could swap out some of the commands in the init rand function or procedure with some of the built-in commands in Vision Basic, such as the SID clear and maybe the voice command or frequency. There's, they also have the pulse and the ADSR commands. However, I did play with some of those settings and I was unable to 
get in, have it have the program function with any of those commands in their place. Now, what you can do instead, if we're looking at lines uh, in the 2000, right here, what we could do is we can replace 2010 with just the pokes. We could say poke the a decimal equivalent of D40E which is 54286 comma 255 comma 255 so that'll hit two that'll hit both 54286 and 54287 using vision basic then i can replace line 2020 with poke now it's the D412 which is 54290 comma 128 which is the decimal equivalent of 80 so let's do our program listing again and really this doesn't have to be in assembler language for any performance purposes it's just to initialize the SID so we can have random numbers generated and let's make sure the program runs and there you have it Anyhow, I will place this code on my GitHub, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.